Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to show you how to do trig substitution. This is going to be a type of problem that regular substitution doesn't work on. We're going to take the x variable and set it equal to a trig function. In other words, we're going to stick a trig function into the problem and that's going to make it much easier. So similar to the previous video, this is really going to test your skills with trig identities and we will use the stuff that we learned in the previous videos, the powers of trig functions, in this video. Trig substitution is used when one of these quantities appears in your integral and you want to simplify it. Suppose I had a quantity appearing as a squared minus b squared x squared. That would be like a constant minus another constant times x squared. The rule is that in that case you're going to substitute x is equal to a over b sine theta. The reason why you're doing this is because imagine that you take this x and actually plug it into this quantity over here on the left. x squared will be equal to a squared over b b squared times sine squared. What will happen is that the b squareds will cancel out and the a squareds will be a common term that you can factor out. What will happen after you factor out is that you'll be left with a trig identity of 1 minus sine squared. So there are some common themes every time you do a trig substitution, which is that the b's end up canceling out and the a's end up factoring out. Let's take a look at the second one. A constant, now this time it's a plus, different from the previous example, a constant times x squared. Square. If you see this in your integral, then you should substitute a over b times tangent theta. That means that x squared would be a squared over b squared tangent squared. The b squareds would cancel out and the a squareds would factor out. And you'd be left with 1 plus tangent squared, which by a trig identity is equal to secant squared. And finally, we have our last rule here that if a constant times x squared minus another constant, now this time the x is in front in comparison to the first rule. If that happens, then you want to substitute a over b times secant theta. And the trig identity you'll end up using is secant squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared. Notice that these two are actually the same trig identity. It's just this one, the plus 1, is written on the left. And in this version, you're moving the 1 to the other side. Let's take a look at our first example for trig substitution. Here's an integral that seems very difficult if you just think about the methods that we've learned so far. Try out substitution. It's pretty hard and doesn't really work for this problem. Try out integration by parts. Also pretty hard doesn't work for this problem. That's why we need trig substitution. Now in order to decide which trig substitution we're doing, we have to follow the format on the previous page. We have 25 minus 4x squared. That is our a squared minus b squared times x squared. Notice that the a squared is 25, indicating that a is equal to 5, and the b squared is equal to 4, indicating that b is equal to 2. Now following the rules on the previous slide, we need to substitute x is equal to 5 over 2 sine theta. Everywhere you see an x, you're going to replace it by quantity 5 over 2 sine theta. We do have to take care of this dx over here. So let's calculate, based on our x value, what is the dx? Here dx is 5 halves cosine theta d theta. And so this is the substitution we need to execute. Now this x here is going to become 5 halves sine theta. That whole x value is getting raised to the fourth power. Now finally, we need to include the dx, which is equal to 5 halves cosine theta d theta. Remember that if a quantity is multiplied on the side here, that's the exact same thing as if it were in the numerator. So as we write in our dx, I'm going to put the dx into the numerator. This is our new integral. As you can see, there's a lot of algebra that we need to do in order to simplify this quantity. So we need to distribute these powers. We can also bring this 5 halves out in front of the integral. Remember, on the previous slide, there was a column that says you will use a certain trig identity. For our substitution, if you go out and check out that chart, for the sine function, you will end up using the trig identity 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. And here you can see it working. The 4 is canceled, the 25 got factored out, and I'm left with 1 minus sine squared. That's the whole reason for the trig substitution, is that now this can get crossed off and replaced by cosine squared. Now I'm just going to continue to simplify this integral. Here I can do a little bit with the numbers, like cancel a 5 and cancel a 2. I can take the square root of 25 and the square root of cosine squared and separate those. And the square root cancels with the square here, leaving me with just a single cosine in the denominator. Now we're getting even more cancellations. The numerator and denominator cancel a cosine, and so we're integrating 1 over sine to the 4th d theta. 
Now remember that 1 over sine is cosecant, so 1 over sine to the 4th will be cosecant to the 4th. As you can see, the trig substitution is resulting in a power of a trig function that we covered in the last section. Actually, we didn't cover exactly this one, but I think we can figure it out based on what we learned in the previous video. Remember these derivative formulas. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, and the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Remember that we had these rules for integrating powers of secant and tangent. For powers of cosecant and cotangent, the rules are really, really similar because the pattern of the derivatives here are just like secant and tangent, except this is cotangent and cosecant. So for an even power of cosecant, it's really similar to an even power of just secant, which is that we're going to factor out a cosecant squared in order to be part of the du. So cosecant squared d theta can be our du. So now we're going to do a regular u substitution with du equal to cosecant squared d theta. Taking the antiderivative here, we obtain u is equal to negative cotangent. Of course, this piece goes into the du, and the remaining piece here we need to do with a trig identity. The trig identity for cosecant and cotangent is that 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. That's really similar to the trig identity for secant and tangent, except now it's cotangent and cosecant. Go back and compare the formulas. You'll see how similar these trig identities really are to the ones that we've done before. So this piece here for the cosecant squared can get replaced by 1 plus cotangent squared, and negative cotangent is our u, so we get 1 plus negative u squared for this quantity. Finally, I can integrate 1 plus u squared du. By the time I do the integration, it's really not that bad. It's just some power rules. And putting the thetas back in, this is almost the answer to the problem. We translated first the original problem was in terms of x. Then we converted into thetas using a trig substitution. Look at that on the previous slide. Then for the theta integration, we switched it into u's in order to do a couple of power rules. And finally, we are converting back to the original variables. We've got u converted back into thetas, and guess what's next? We need to convert the thetas back into x's. Before we do that, I'm just going to simplify the minus signs here a little bit, and now we can focus on converting the thetas back into x's. Now, there's two different ways that you can teach this method for converting back into x's. One way is using the definitions of the trig functions and a bunch of trig identities. I'm going to show you a method that I think is kind of neat, and what we're going to do is use a triangle. Recall that the original substitution in the beginning of this problem was x is equal to 5 halves sine theta. Now this relationship that we substitute in the beginning of the problem is spelling out how theta is related to x. So if we want to convert these thetas back into corresponding x's, we have to use the original substitution. Now, now what we're going to do is just a tiny bit of algebra on this. Let's multiply by 2 on both sides so that the 2 moves over, and then divide by 5. What you get is 2x over 5 is equal to sine theta. Now do you remember what sine theta is equal to in terms of the sides of the triangle? I hope you remember it's opposite over hypotenuse. What this means is that the opposite side on the triangle that I'm going to draw should be 2x, and the hypotenuse hypotenuse on the triangle should be length 5. Okay, so let's draw our picture of a right triangle with an angle theta. Opposite to theta will be the 2x, and the hypotenuse will be length 5. So here we've got a triangle where we know what the hypotenuse is, and we know what one of the sides are. How can we figure out what the remaining side is on the triangle? I hope you remember this from basic trigonometry. We use the Pythagorean theorem. The remaining side here is is the square root of 25 minus 4x squared. I hope that you'll do out the work on your own. Now that we've got the sides of our triangle, we need to get cotangent theta. Remember that tan is opposite over adjacent. Cotan is adjacent over opposite. So I'm looking at the triangle and I grab the adjacent, which is the square root of 25 minus 4x squared. That's the numerator for the cotangent. The denominator should be the opposite side, which here is 2x. So that's our cotangent theta. Luckily, 
luckily we have another cotangent theta over here so we don't have to do too much more work we just have to write in our expression that we found don't forget here that the whole cotangent theta is cubed for this problem Alrighty, that is our final answer folks um, this is the answer to the trig substitution problem that we started a couple of slides ago don't worry too much about simplifying your final answer if there's some little part of it that you want to kind of make it look a little bit nicer like cubing this or pulling out minus signs or raising two to the third power feel free to do that but this is okay for a final answer in this course this is the general strategy that you're going to be using for trig substitution problems first you do the trig substitution converting from x's into thetas this intermediate step may or may not be necessary depending on your problem our resulting theta problem really required us to do substitution in order to get u that was like a regular substitution a regular u sub then we convert back into thetas and finally back into x's using the triangle that we see on this slide well that was fun let's do another now everything that you learned on the previous example is basically everything you need to know for trig substitution i'm just doing a second example in order to mix things up a little bit but nothing's going to really be new in this example we're just going to follow the same steps that we did for example one now in our problem we have an x squared minus four remember if you go back to the first slide in this video one of the formats that we have to choose from is b squared x squared minus a squared looking at the pieces it looks like our a squared is equal to four so a is equal to two and the b squared here we just have b is equal to one according to the first slide in this video x here will be equal to two over one the secant theta of course if two is divided by one that's the same thing as just two so i left it as two all right so this x has got to get replaced by two secant theta the dx also needs to get appropriately replaced according to this relationship looks like dx is equal to two secant theta tangent theta d theta we've got our dx in the numerator and down below we've got the square root of x squared x squared is equal to 2 squared secant squared or in other words 4 secant squared and now just copying down this minus 4 here's what we've got the 4 and the 4 is a common factor here this will happen in every trig sub problem a squared will always factor out after you make the substitution now quiz yourself do you know what's coming next I hope that you know we're going to use the trig identity according to the first slide we will be using the trig identity C secant squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared. So let's go ahead and do that underneath the square root. All right, we've got a bunch of stuff going on here. The 2 cancels with square root of 4, which is also 2. We've also got the square root canceling with the square. So there's only a single tangent in the denominator. But notice there's also a tangent in the numerator. So the tangent in the numerator is going to further cancel with the single tangent left in the denominator. A lot of stuff is canceling out. At the end of the day, we just have the antiderivative of secant theta. I hope you remember we did this in class. Look in your notes for how to do this problem. Remember, there's two options. You can either have it memorized or you can derive it step by step. That's my favorite method. Anyway, the antiderivative of secant is the ln of the absolute value of secant plus tangent. Okay, so we took the antiderivative. Are we done? Is that our answer? I hope that you can recognize there's one more step that we've got to do. Let's think about this. We started with x. We can converted into thetas. That allowed us to do the integration. Now that I have my antiderivative in terms of theta, I most certainly have to convert back into x's, just like the previous example. Remember, in order to make the triangle, we have to go back to the original substitution. In this problem, the original substitution was x is equal to 2 secant theta. Now I want to make a triangle out of this, so I'm going to divide by 2 and make this a ratio of x over 2 is equal to secant theta. Now what is secant theta in terms of the sides of the triangle? Remember that it's 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is 1 over that hypotenuse over adjacent. So it looks like this x is our hypotenuse and the adjacent is the 2. Let's draw the triangle. 
Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can solve for the remaining side that's missing over here. You can write that out and kind of do out the work for yourself. You get the square root of x squared minus 4. All right, here, let's get back to our original problem. This was our answer, ln of secant theta plus tangent theta. So what we have to do is write secant theta using our triangle. Remember, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. The hypotenuse is x and the adjacent is 2. Actually, we already knew that, right? It says right here, secant theta is equal to x over 2. Now, what's the tangent theta? So it's the square root of x squared minus 4 over the adjacent, which is 2. And finally, we have our final answer. It is already back in terms of x, so we are done. So make sure you understand all of the various parts of these detailed problems, including converting back into x's using a triangle. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video on trig substitution. As you can see, these problems can get pretty long and challenging, so you really need to be up to speed on your basics of trig functions, your trig identities, and we're going to work on more of this in class. So, I'll see you soon.